Hey guys, Coach Jorge Capistani here, and I'm really excited to show you how I use the Rebounder Deluxe from our friends at Encore and Off Court. So this is really an awesome tool for us. We can use it in confined spaces. I have it here in the court, but I've had it in my lobby as well. Before you think it's tennis only, I'm going to show you that I have a pickleball here and a pickleball racket, and this is easily usable with pickleball. Okay, so it's good for pickleball, and I'm going to show you some other transition balls that I can use. Can I borrow your racket? Here I'm going to show you a foam ball, a red felt ball, and an orange ball, just so you see how it works. This is the foam ball, so it works really well. No problem there. I'm going to go to the felt ball that's red, and you can see that this works pretty good. Okay, no problem there. And let's look at what an orange ball does on this rebounder. So even easier. All right, so it's really, really clever. Now, I want to point out something. The nice thing about this rebounder is it has flexibility in how laid back it will be. Right now I have it in the back position so the net is somewhat laid back. I can also adjust this really easily and make it straight up for different exercises. Right now let me show you a couple of those. Alright, so I'm going to show you a real common way you can use this. i got my player out here, Jacob. Jacob, just do a one-man one workout. This is very common if someone just wants to borrow this or rent it, however you want to make it usable. Uh, he can just do that. Now, he can give himself challenges like forehands, backhands, alternating. I'm going to give you one. I want you to hit from further back. So let's do two bounces. Give it a good smack. Two bounces. And this allows him to be further back and he can take a more advanced cut at the ball. So this is a really good option. Now let's morph this. Let's say that Tyler, his buddy, is here with him. So come out, Tyler. The nice thing about the Rebounder Deluxe is that it's wide enough where you can go side by side. So go ahead and do that, guys. Let's do a cooperative. I always suggest cooperative first. And then another quick variation that I can do on that, guys, is a single file line. Feeder feeds and stays for one. Okay, the feeder and then one, and then you alternate, quickly getting out of the way. Okay, so that's an variation that you can do. And that can be done cooperative or it can be done competitive. Now I'll show you one that I like with my group classes. Let's get all the players out. Guys, this is going to be knockout, kind of like ping pong. You, the feeder feeds and then the next people go. Remember, well, whoever feeds hits one additional shot and you really got to go. Let's do a cooperative. Let's see if we can set a team record of how many in a row. That's two. That's right. Zeke was a little too close. Three, four, maybe that's five, I think. Six. Seven, eight, nine, pretty good. Okay, stop. These guys are awesome. Now we could have a competition with this group and then the next group shifts over and they can have a competition. Now guys, let's play that game kind of knockout, but let me have you back up. When you play knockout, you have to make sure they're not just hitting wild shots that go anywhere. So when you ricochet off this, you're trying to wound the guy behind you, beat him. But here's your boundaries right here in this no man's land. And the baseline is single, so the alleys are out for this. Okay, feeder hits one, hits one more, and then rotate. So trying to win now, ready? Let's go. That's one, and the next shot. I'm gonna say you have to hit the ball higher than the net, so I'll be the judge of that. Oh, little drop shot. Nice angle. Oh, the angles are coming out. Oh, time. Okay, so watch. I'm judging that to have been too low, so I'm going to kick out Jacob, okay? Now, by the way, you could put a little string through here so it sim simulates a net. That would be more visually obvious. Okay, down to three, guys. Down to three. Feeder hits one plus, and get out of the way. Trying to not... Oh, a dropper. Kyle's there. Slammer. Oh, we better hustle back. Oh, Kyle picked it. Ah, time out. I thought that was too low. So Kyle's out, and we're down to Zeke and... Hey, uh, Tyler. Oh boy, here we go. Who's going to win the first game of knockout? Sliced it. A little dropper. He wails on it. Backs up nice. Look at the movement, guys. I like it. If the players get in each other's way, I'll just call do over. Not at time. So the champion is Tyler for this particular game. So let's show you some more stuff. Okay, guys, the other thing I want to point out is because this new rebounder has a big green border, it kind of is visually better to show people the target area in the middle. So let's try a couple of advanced things if you have players like that. Uh, Jacob, I want you to get really close to the net and try to sustain a forehand volley to forehand volley sequence. Okay? Okay, pretty good. And obviously you could switch that to forehand volley, backhand volley, whatever you want. Let's do an even more advanced skill, Jacob. I want you to serve, come in volley or half volley, and then keep a volley going. 
Okay, so there's the serve, half volley, and keep this going. Keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. All right, if you reach five, you score a point. Try it again. It's kind of advanced. That first one might be a half volley like that. Okay, and then you keep it going. And now I'm going to give you a goal. Right. Serve, come in, volley or half volley, two volleys, catch it. Okay, serve. Okay, come in, one, two, and catch it. Boom, point. All right, so you can get creative with the different things that you can do. Here's a cool drill I call uh, sequence coding. So, what's going to happen is I normally do this with younger players. So I'll just demonstrate this with a, a foam ball, but it could be older players with a yellow ball. What I'm going to do is try to teach players the different sizes of swings. I don't want them to just have one giant swing. So here's how it's going to go. We're going to call this area here. We can even light it up. This is zone one, okay? And this is zone two. And back here is zone three. So what I'm going to do is just have the player get used to hitting, and he's just going to call. That was zone one. That was zone two. That was zone two. This is zone one. Okay, so that's just so they could used to it. Then I'm gonna give them a code, a three digit code. And I'm gonna say it's gonna be one, two, two, okay? So now their goal is to feed the ball one, and then two, not quite, two. So they're gonna learn that for some things they want short strokes, for other ones they want a bigger backswing. So let's change the sequence one more time. You can make these up like crazy. Let's go two, one, three. Okay, so I want a two here, got it. A one there, got it, and a three here. Not quite, I was a little short on that one. So that's a real clever drill that helps with different sizes of swings. Great with you know, young kids, but really you can do that all the way up through adults if you want. All right, just a couple more things. I'm gonna show you how this angle can go from 15 degrees laid back and I can simply adjust it. All we're gonna do is take this bar back here, Andrew, and move it to the up position. So let's go ahead and do that real quickly. So now you can see, especially from the top view, this is straight up and down. There's no more angle to it. So here's the goal, and this is kind of an advanced one, okay? So I'm gonna show you this. I want you to see if you can sustain an overhead to overhead rally. That means you're gonna get close, spike the ball, it'll go into the ground, you hit an overhead and keep it going into the ground, and see how many in a row you can do. This is quite difficult, coaches. When I try this with players in the beginning, uh, they make a lot of mistakes. So the goal is just to see how many overheads in a row you can get. Not bad, there's the hang of it. There's the hang of it. Okay, good. So that's a challenging one. Good job, buddy. So there's a bunch of cool things that you can do. And now, one more thing. I'm at an indoor club, so you might be thinking storing this is gonna be an issue because it's maybe four feet deep but I came up with something I wanna show you. I'm gonna turn this sideways and show you an awesome way to store this even in a small space. All right, here's how I store this baby. It's real simple. I'm just gonna go right here to this joint and I'm gonna pop it out. It's just a, one of those little things. So now I've disconnected it. So Jacob, what's gonna happen is we're gonna hold our left hand here and we're gonna drop this down and now we're gonna pick up right here. And now you can see I've just turned this thing into no deeper than, or no wider than six inches. I can easily slide that behind a curtain and keep it safe just by disconnecting the leg in two seconds. All right guys, so there you have it. This is all the cool things I showed you with the Rebounders Deluxe. Great tool. If you want to get it, I got it from on-court, off-court. I hope you can use it at your club today.